Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi everybody, welcome to our show. Believe it or not, this is our 99th Tipsy Tuesday episode. Yikes, 99 shows. So thanks for being with us. Um, very happy that you're here. It's a glorious day in Minnesota today. So uh, thank you for being here, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. Make sure to send us some hearts and thumbs up. We need hearts today. Everybody needs some hearts today. Um, and then of course, make sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet. Tonight's show, we will be finishing up our blocks for the strip joint strip along part three we will also be releasing six new patterns to show you yay it's a big show big show um, so again use those thumbs ups and you can of course share our video that helps us spread the news um, to all your friends and get our shows out there to keep us go coming uh, of course we have a giveaway every show two winners every show one winner is chosen randomly from your comments during the live show and then we also have a question at the end giveaway question that you get a chance to answer and then enter into the giveaway which will be announced in our next show of course last show mr hp he is with us tonight yay hi everybody hi. yay um, he got to pick the last giveaway question for the last, last week's show, and it was, what is your favorite classic car? And our winner from the questions is Miss Nancy Krasinski. Congratulations, Nancy. Her answer was, not really a car girl, but give me a Thelma and Louise convertible and I'm happy. Wind in the hair and bugs in the teeth. Yes, I love it. I put the car up. Oh, you put the car? So he looked up what kind of car that was, right? 66 Thunderbird. Nice. Have you driven in a 66 Thunderbird? No, but a 68. A 68 Thunderbird, yeah. Yes. Someone asked me what suicide doors were. Yeah, okay. What are suicide doors? Explain The back that. doors actually turned the other way. So, so they, they open, open like together. this? Yeah. On the sides? Okay. Correct. Very good. I didn't know that. <laughs> I know it's a horrible name, but... Yeah. Well, first, uh, first things first, I wanted to mention that our uh, Pyramid Topper video, our Fast and Furious project for the month of April, went live this morning. I saw some people already sewing this morning so uh if you haven't done so you if you were a part of fast and furious club you can download your pattern and get going the video is there there's an extra video there's two video new videos for this month because it's both the instructional video for for um, fast and furious club and then i did a separate video to teach you how to do the binding by machine for those 60 degree corners so that is something that i will be sharing with all of you next week so uh but for now anybody that either purchased the the pyramid toppers on their own which the, now they're available on their own or are are part of um fast and furious club either trimester three or the full nine months that should all be in your account so go check it out and start playing i can't wait to see some more pyramid toppers and especially how you display them. You're going to use them on their own or match them up together, put them on a table to make placemats, whatever it will be. I think it will be really cool, really pretty. All right, so we are actually, we got a lot to get to tonight, so we're going to start with our strip along. So let's move on into the strip joint again. Welcome to the strip joint. This is part three of our strip along 
our fifth annual and things are coming together. I cannot wait to see all those strip joints. I've already seen a lot. So um, some of you are moving ahead. That's totally fine. I'm not offended. Don't worry about it. Just take everything at your own speed. So in this part, we're going to start putting together the units that I made you finish last time. So we have the block units and then now we're going to make the d two different blocks, the, the dark and the light. So let me show you how um, we put that together. What you want to do first is you want to make sure that you have all of the light. So my light is green. So I have all of my units that have the green on the outside. So then what you want to do is when you arrange this block, you want to take all from the same and just the, the biggest mistake people do, or not really a mistake, maybe you wanted to make, uh, I'm not going to talk about, there's all kinds of things you can play with to do different things with this block. But if you want to make blocks like this, what you want to do is when you have your dark centers, you want to make sure that there is the light is on the all of the outside edges. So there's no dark coming out to the to the edge because it is kind of kind of tempting to do something like this accidentally and you will notice that that's the wrong block when you see that there's dark coming out to the edge of the block so the blocks should float the dark should float in a sea of light in a sea of green for me and then vice versa so you want to play with arranging these so now I have a lot of variety so let me just show you how the dark ones would be when you arrange them so it'll be the opposite. So we want dark on the outside corners. And so same thing. We don't want any light floating out to the edges. So we have it circled, circled by the dark all the way around. So now I know this is going to be right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put these together into the four. So make a four patch. And I know this is not in the pattern, but I'm going to show you how I like to do four patches. I'm, I like to press them in a circle or do what I call spinning seams. So what you want to do is sew these two together this way um, and then go and press. And I like to press towards the, the long strip. So I press this seam this way and this seam that way. So this one's pressed this way, this one's pressed that way. Does that make sense? I'm going to show you. I have two pieces now sewn together. We'll swap these out. So here I have the two pieces. One is pressed this way and one is pressed that way. So now we can put these together and sew the long seam. What you want to do is just match the center. You will notice that will nest perfectly because the seams are pressed opposite. Just put a couple of pins in here and then these guys will nest as well because if you press towards um, the little squares this this should nest here this seam here and this seam here so it all nests so these are the only three seams you have to match when you're putting these blocks together so then you're going to sew this seam and before you do anything else i'm just going to swap in my little ironing pad even though you should never iron on top of your cutting mat do as i say not as i do okay <laughs> um, i have my iron on very low heat just so i could show you so now i have this sewn together and because I pressed this seam this way and this seam this way, I want to press it in a circle. So I want to press this seam that way and this seam that way. So what, you, what is interesting and, and easy to remember, the long piece here, instead of the one with all the seams, you want to press towards the long side. The long side. So I take my iron and I'm going to push the seam out and just press on this side push out but I'm not going to press right in the middle middle so just this way and then I'm going to do the same thing with this but go in the other way push the seam out press with my iron like that and then I'm going to flip my block over so now I see this seam is going this way this seam is going this way and I can see that I manage to do the spinning right because there's spinning in a circle and all you want to do is go right in the middle here pop a couple of stitches and open up that center and then I just want to put my iron right in the center for just a little while and then flip my block over 
and give it a really good press. This way you will have a really nice flat center, no thick seams. But the best part about doing this with quilts like this and blocks like this when we are laying it out, and once we start laying it out, you have your light blocks or with a light on the outside and then you have your dark on the outside is that if you want to twist some things around for example if you had same uh, fabrics close to each other you just wanted to twist things it does not matter at all because all the seams are spun the same way so when we are putting the blocks together every single seam will also nest so when if I were to sew these together here this seam will nest and this is the only seam that you have to kind of match and it nests easily so you so it's easy to sew everything together so once we have all our blocks done what you want to do is is lay them out and we, I um, the original pattern is just alternating the lights and darks so first row will, would be dark light dark or however um, many blocks you have it of course depends on the size and then you would have a light block here and a dark block down here so that's how that would come together and I just sew them in rows either horizontal or vertical it really doesn't matter and then sew the rows together uh, once I have the rows sewn I like to just press the big seams first row to the right second row to the left and so on and then everything will nest also when you put it all together because these are still spun in opposite directions so these two seams will also always nest so that is pretty much it it's time to put it all together and finish up your strip joints I cannot wait to finish this lovely green and black quilt I think it's it's really fun it's perfect for spring and so um, I am ready to take your questions on anything regarding the blocks or the strip joints, any questions you have. Now if you, let me just tell you this, last Friday I showed you if you happen to sew that diagonal seam backwards, so, so you're going to be spinning your strip joints the other way, make sure you do the pressing of the opposite way as well. And that is, is only if you have all of your blocks sewn that way. Now if you have only a couple, you might need to finagle a little bit but um, if you have all your blocks on that way you will just be spinning the opposite direction so any questions great comments that's good so I, I wanted to say too before if you don't want to put the blocks together in this configuration you, this block actually you can play with the layouts as you may have seen if you're a part of goodness quilt crew on Facebook people are trying out all kinds of different arrangements and that's really fun to see so you can keep playing don't think that you have to do it exactly like me uh, I of course am famous for saying uh, I encourage rebel behavior so uh, I would love to see what you come up with so play with it and um, this is just the way that it's in the pattern and I like it that way for my blocks, but sometimes other types of blocks might um, benefit for something else. So, did I decide to go, go bigger? No, not yet. I have plenty of strips, don't, don't get me wrong. So not yet, I still have enough blocks for a lap size. I may have a little extra. I probably have a couple of extra blocks. So I may do just a longer or something, or maybe go a square, or I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see how, how many blocks I end up with. Did you trim your blocks before sewing into four patch? No, you should not trim anything because if your seams are correct, um, everything should fit together. So no trimming on this part. So trimming usually involves if you, you know, if you did, um, not if you over cut something or cut something oversized and you want to trim it down so this part pattern is not written that way you can also measure your pieces the pieces before you start sewing them together should be eight and a half inches and if they're over that you can easily trim that because there's not nothing is going to be kind of um, there's no seams to match that are going to be you know um, challenged or or 
what is the word I'm looking for? No, I'm just blanking. But th there's, it's not going to mess up anything matching in the pattern if you do trim it up. So it's up to you. Um, but just know that if you, if things are turning out bigger or smaller than eight and a half inches, then maybe check your seam allowance or your pressing. So that might be where the issues lie if your pieces are not turning out the right, right size. Where can I find instructions for the strip joint in one and a half inch strips? That is actually in our Stripology 2 book. It's a little booklet, just a small little booklet with six different patterns, all done with one and a half inch strips, and they all have sister, big sister patterns that are um, done with two and a half inch strips. Good question. All right, any more questions? Are we ready to move on? I know you're all excited to see the new patterns and what's coming. Um, <laughs> Mary says, if your seams are correct, are, is usually my problem. Well, you know what? If you haven't yet, let me tell you this. I put together a little video. Um, it's called Piecing Accuracy. And so if you have not watched that, it's on the YouTube channel. It's on, you can find it on the website under videos, uh, a link to it. But it's like really good because it addresses all the little things that go into our seams being accurate. And it's not just the actual seam allowance. There's many other things that can alter your, your piecing accuracy. So check that out. Um, I give great tips on also just finding your right seam allowance because you should always be piecing with a scant, scant quarter inch seam. And what I mean by that is that you should not be exactly quarter inch, should be like a needle width or two less, just so your fabric has room to fold over and then you have a perfect quarter inch. So. There's ways to measure and, and test your machine uh, because a quarter inch foot, having a quarter inch foot is not enough. They're, none of them are created equal and uh, we always have to still know where to put our fabric on our quarter inch foot. And sometimes you can alter it by just moving a needle if your machine can do that, but um, it's just the best way to test it or to figure out your right seam allowance is just test, test, test until you got it down and then practice, 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 practice. That means making more quilts, so it's great. <laughs> it's an awesome thing. Um, okay, so any more questions? Uh, they're all waiting. Oh, okay. Yeah, new pattern, yeah. new pattern, new patterns. All right, so we will move on. So what I want you to do, of course, last finish of a strip joint, is just finish your quilts. Put them together. Take a photo. Uh, you can add your borders if you wanted to. Do whatever you want. I would love to see him. And we will be doing a slideshow of some quilts next week. I know not even half of them will be finished. But don't worry. We always do a, a second slideshow later on. But if you have your quilts done already, or at least tops, take some photos, post them in the crew, and we will um, include them in the slideshow. And if you are not on Facebook, you can always email us, and we will include it in the slideshow. All right, so it's time for the new patterns. Now, they, I want to say this, they are not in-house yet. So we, they, these patterns are available both as a PDF download and will be as a printed pattern. They are not, the printed patterns are not in-house yet. So we estimate beginning to ship those next week, but we will have them available for, to order um, after the show. So first one up, this one you knew about. Of course, you've known about her for a long time. You've been anticipating her arrival. And that is, of course, our beautiful Astrid. So let's check out. This is the pattern cover. I decided I needed to go with the version that I did last. I have done quite a few Astrids. And so um, the pattern cover features my, my Astrid made out of the dual fabric line and uh, in the inset it has the tulip pink version. So this quilt is made actually with uh, a focus fabric which you can see in the middle of the blocks and then it also carries out to be the wide border. So that's your focus fabric and then you need a background. So there's my aquarelle version that is hanging behind me. Um, a background is, in this case, it's the white, so it's the one that creates the sashing as well between the blocks. And then I wrote the pattern to use either two and a half inch strips, so you can do this with scrappy two and a half inch strips, or fat quarters. So either way, um, you there's both instructions in the pattern, of course. Now, 
um, there's my tulip pink version. So this pattern, and in this case I use the background, is the black. So it changes up the look. Um, now this pattern is written for both a Stripology XL ruler or regular rulers. Um, unfortunately, you cannot use the squared or the, the original Stripology because we need that 60 degree line, two 60 degree lines. This version of, of Astrid is um, called Moody Bloom. No, no, no. This is Wild Beauty. Sorry. This is the Wild Beauty version. And, um, oh, did I say Moody Bloom? Yeah, I, that's my mistake. This is Wild Beauty. <laughs> and you may see the difference. So see that this layout, you'll see how it's scrappier because I mixed up the colors within the block. Um, can we put up the Tula Pink again just to see the difference? So both options I talk about in the pattern, you can do it um, like this where you can see kind of like L's of the same fabric. And then let's check out the Wild Beauty again where it's mixed up. Um, and that's the scrappy, scrappy option. Um, or mixing up. It's more mixed up. Um, if you look at the pattern cover again, let's look at the pattern cover again. That will show you, I did the, my Astrid and I mixed it up. Um, and the Tula is non-mixed up. So that is Astrid. And um, on top of having Astrid, of course, be uh, available as a pattern, what will be coming, hopefully as early as tomorrow, you can purchase the pattern either as a PDF or a printed one. But if you enjoy a little extra help, if you enjoy our videos, you can purchase an Astrid video class to go with. So it's, it's kind of like our uh, Fast and Furious Lab. You purchase the class and then you have it to stream forever. So that's where I take you through all the steps um, in the Astrid pattern and give you options. I show you how to cut it with the XL ruler, but I also show you how to cut it with regular rulers. So it takes you through all of it. And um, so that will be available. It's not available today, tonight. We didn't quite get it all edited and done, but we will have it out um, later this week, hopefully by tomorrow. We'll see. How about um, a teaser? <laughs> yeah, here's a teaser. So just to show you. That's it. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> You have to do that again. You do it again. Are do it sure? again. Are you sure? Here's a teaser. Sure. Here's a teaser. <laughs> watch, 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 watch quick. Ooh, okay. wow. Yeah, that was really quick. <laughs> that's all you get, so. <laughs> yeah, so that's exciting and um, something that we may continue start to start doing when we have a release of certain patterns. If it's, if it, you know, I feel, if I feel that it would be really helpful to have all those extra Little tips and points. All right, so our next one up, a very different from Astrid. You know, Astrid kind of looks really complicated, but it truly isn't. If you know me and my patterns, uh, most people can do it. We did Astrid during our retreat, and we had lots of people that were making their second and third quilt. So complete beginners, um, pretty much. So that was really exciting, and their Astrid turned out wonderful. Now this next one is very easy and fast. So this is our second one, my second pattern in the series where I take a previous pattern and I supersize it. So this is Steamy Windows Supersized. Um, you may remember my Nina Supersized. The Nina Supersized pretty much uses up, it uses fat quarters and so does this Steamy Windows. It uses fat quarters and it, you completely almost use the whole fat quarter. And um, so it uses up the fat quarter really nicely. It has big pieces, great to use for any kind of focus fabrics that you don't want to cut up too much. Um, great for flannel. I love it using flannel. And actually the one in the corner, I just really made up. So this one is made with fat quarters um, from a fabric that we have on pre-order right now. It is um, the lap size. It takes 15, 15 fat quarters. Um, the the twin size takes 24. So if you have a bundle of 12, a half yard bundle of 12 will make the twin size. But this one is uh, super quick. I made it from the time I cut the fat quarters until the top was ready. I think it was under four hours. Yes, it's that quick. Uh, and the one that's on the cover is made with my London fabrics. And that one, I couldn't stop. So I used the London bundle and I started making all the blocks. And then I had actually 
had some London f um, fat quarters that I collected throughout the years. So I threw them in there too. And so that one is a king size. It's a queen king. Um, I'm going to hold it up for you so you can kind of see, but it's really big. I can't even hold up um, all of it. So this, I'm holding it sideways. But I love, love, love it. And so if you want to make a themed quilt or something where you really want to show off the fabrics and don't really want to um, cut it up too much, this is it. Yes, it's so big. <laughs> but I love it because it will cover the whole bed. And I got to show you the back. So the back I used, we have that main London print in three yards. So it was really perfect to take two three yards and then I pieced the middle and I used these panels. We used the London panels. They're not from the same fabric line, but still London. So it's a really cool quilt both ways. Okay, thank you. Let's hold this up so they can see more of it. It's just so, I love quilts where you can kind of just make the fabrics shine and they're quick to make, really quick to make. So this is super size steamy windows. <laughs> we have, I, I have more stuff to hold up later on. But um, this one, like I said, is a great quick, quick quilt, quick uh, pattern to make. So I can see this um, like a go-to when you need a quick gift or you see a bundle of fabrics that are really have this like theme to it and would be perfect for a certain person um, just re to really show off the fabrics. Great for su uh, absolute beginners. If you have kids that are starting to quilt or you want to teach them to quilt, this is a great one to teach them to use the Stripology ruler, cutting up the fat quarters, and then um, going forward from there, subcutting and piecing. It's a great one because this just, you know, matching those rectangles uh, seams, it's a great practice. Oh, we have a stowaway on set. <laughs> oh, because there's a quilt on the ground, so now he thinks that's his. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this next pattern is actually a republication because um, this was in a book initially, and the book is now out of print. It is available as an ebook, but you may remember this one. We did a sew along for this earlier. Uh, no, last year. So this is the grab and go tote. Now available as a single pattern. So you can buy it individually as a PDF or a printed pattern. And uh, we, I just have to tell you, we have some lovely, lovely coated fabrics coming in this spring. So this one takes you, you have one fabric for the base on the bottom, and then you have a charm pack or five inch squares for the upper body of the bag. And then you just need a half yard for your um, handles and your binding, and then a yard for the lining. So I tweaked if you have the book and you um, I tweaked this pattern a little bit because so this tote is like an inch smaller on two sides that's it because I wanted to be able to use a yard for the lining instead of having to buy a yard and an eighth so it just works out much better and so um, it's a little tweaked but we love it and like I said we'll be putting together some kits for the tote, or at least um, have some pre-cuts of the coated fabric. So that's optional. You don't have to put coated fabric on the bottom. I have mine here, but it's full of stuff, so I can't lift it. <laughs> but it is um, kind of laminated fabric, so it is kind of weather resistant. You can put it down in dirt or um, in the rain or whatever, and it won't, won't harm anything that's inside. I use these totes all the time. This is the haul tote that goes between the warehouse and here for all, holding all the stuff for the show. So it takes a beating, it takes a beating, but it works really well. So that is the third pattern. Um, and then we have our littles. Our little patterns are uh, patterns that are for table runners. And so they are uh, versions of my big patterns that use 10, and 10 inch squares, but made with five inch squares. And they're folded into these little cute patterns and with a great price point of $6.25. Um, they are really kind of addicting to make. So we'll start with little Jojo. I showed you this earlier. I've given you sneak peeks of all of these. So little Jojo is um, the one that we made during retreat and very, very, very cute and quick actually. 
quicker than you think. And of course, um, all of these use, I use the Stripology Mini ruler, but I also give you instructions for regular rulers. Uh, this one I made with a dwell, so it matches my Astrid. And then this one I made with uh, Dance in Paris, which is a fabric line that's coming in um, this in just maybe a few weeks, I believe. And so both of them, um, I love both of them. But this is perfect because it takes one charm pack, so 45 inch squares, or you can go dig up uh, something from your, from your collection or cut your own. Um, I'm actually working on a quilt uh, from, a, from a line that I'm just working from a bundle. So I, what I did, I cut 10 inch squares from my quilt, and then I, instead of, I would have um, about eight inches left of my half yard, I cut five inch squares so I can make two runners that match my quilt. So that's really a, a great way to do it. So this is little Jojo. She's not uh, the first one out of the littles, the new littles. The next new little is little Helena. She is her big mama. It, she's one that looks complicated, of course, with all of the little star points and awkward angles and triangles and, and weird shapes. But, um, of course, you don't sew a single triangle when you make this one because it's all about sewing and cutting and sewing back together. And then it's all about how you put them, how you square them up to put them together. Really, really cute too. And I, I only had uh, used two, kind of two color groups. So just the orange and then the black and gray because this is from Midnight Magic 2, which is a fabric line coming out too. So from a bundle that uh, we had. And so then I used a single background fabric throughout, but this, I also have a second um, one that I made that is going to be scrappy. Uh, scrappy lights and scrappy darks and so you can mix it all up if you have more colors or you can block them together into fours like here but it's it's totally up to you love this one it's a, it's fun to make and everybody's so impressed to see all your little all your little tiny little points which never get chopped off with this pattern never all right so the third one is little Trixie Little Trixie, of course, uh, the original is in my latest mixology book, the full-size Trixie. And so this one, I, I really love how this one turned out. Um, this is a uh, Rust and Smoke, I believe, is the name of the fabric line that's coming also soon. And then I used a deco stitch in this pecan praline color that I just love this color combination. So um, this one I use scrappy lights and scrappy darks. So you, it's five inch squares for, for both of them. And so what I did with, because I had two charm packs of this that I got uh, ahead of time before release, I actually was able to make a little topper from another one. And I still didn't use all my squares. So I took these, kind of the rust colored and um, a little bit darker for my background. And then I just use the scrappy for my accent. Um, and so a great way from two charm packs to get two, um, two quilts, a little topper and a runner. And you, there's a second uh, layout version for this runner for Trixie in the, in the pattern. In the book, there's multiple layouts. In the, in the pattern, there's two different layouts for this. So you can do the pinwheels that create that little square with the accent fabric or you can do uh, a different layout that is more uh, linear that way. So that is the third of our littles. So six new patterns are available uh, all already on the website. Just know if you order the paper patterns that they, we will not ship that right away. So if you want to order something else uh, that you need fast, maybe not order at the same time, but we're hoping by the beginning of next week that we'll start shipping them as soon as they come in. Who knows, they might come in this week. Um, we're hoping, but I'm, I'm always going to, you know, side on the side, on the side of caution, so I'm not going to tell you anything and, and then break your heart if it's, that's not the case. So we're, we're expecting them next week, so we'll get them out to you as soon as possible. And of course, the PDFs are instant download, so you can get those right away. Um, I wanted to tell you with Astrid that a lot of these versions that you saw, we have kits. So should we, should we check out the quilts? I should hold them up again. Kobe, are you going to help? I don't think so. So let me show you. 
Yeah, you gotta get out of the way. So this is the dwell, and this is the one. <laughs> you gotta get out of the way. <laughs> so this is the dwell, and this is the one on the cover of the pattern. And this, I actually just sewed a lap size, so this is the three sizes in the pattern, but all of our kits are for the twin size. So this is the dwell. I'll put it um, in the close up too. Do you want to do the overhead so I can see the close up? Millie, of course, no, um, Millie. Gertie quilted all these with me. And this one I chose a really cool gold thread. And, um, oh, what was the, what was the name? Random Fans. Random Fans is the name of the pattern that I quilted this one with. So this is the one, um, the kit for the dwell. I'll show you that. We have that here as well. So that is for the lap size. So we have all of it is from that same fabric line. It includes the binding. So that's already in the store. And then the next one is our Moody Bloom. No, this is not Moody Bloom. Sorry, sorry. I always get this wrong. This is Wild Beauty. Wild Beauty. Um, the fabric is from Art Gallery. That's the focus fabric. And then this one has the gray accent. And then all these beautiful colors for um, for the for the strips or for the fat quarters. We have fat quarters in the in the kits. I love this kind of a swirly design we did with this one and um, gray thread for quilting on on Wild Beauty. And then the pa the kit. Let me show you how that looks. We have some of those. Now, some of these kits we don't have a whole lot of because we, you know, we, these are just what we had left from the retreat. So this is the kit for Wild Beauty, the twin size. So then the next one is that I have here is Tula Pink. So this is using her Lineworks uh, lemurs in the border and the main print and then we used um, I used some of her her basics her color th um, what is it called no I'm blanking on it so this one and I do include in that uh, video class directions if you have directional fabric if you wanted to cut your borders differently but um, here is I, pr I quilted this with purple thread I love 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 this this um, pattern now I'm blanking on what it's called. I think it's called Fusion. But I definitely will be using that again. It gives a lot of motion. And the, the kits, we do have, still have some Tula kits. So this one, is, this is how that one looks. And her tent stripe for a binding. You can cut it straight or you can cut it on the bias. Whatever look you want. Um, the other one we have is, we only have... We have the um, aquarelle kit right here. So that is the quilt hanging behind me. So this one is with the blue and red floral. And then we have the blue and red uh, fat quarters and a cool uh, stripe binding. We have only a few of these Stonehenge kits. So this is the Stonehenge Dark. I think we only have just a handful. So don't get mad at me if those sell out really fast. And then we have the Astrid Moody Bloom. This is the Moody Bloom. So that's that big black, um, the black floral is gorgeous. And then beautiful colors in the fat quarters. And then you have binding here. So these are the kits we have available. But we also have more stuff that we now made live um, in the shop from, let me move this out of the way from the retreat. So we have some options for backs. So we have some of these in three years. So the Wild Beauty, the main print from Wild Beauty. Um, a lot of folks were using that for backings for their, um, for their quilts. We also have the Aquarelle main print. And then we have some Moody Bloom. Not from the main print, but from the line. So we have the white large floral and then the black small floral but these could all also be used as the main print if you wanted to put together your own own um, kit 
And then we have um, a Stonehenge Verona light. This is not the print used as a main print, but this was a, in particular a, a print that we used, a lot of folks used for the backing of their quilts. Some of them, uh, some of these fibers, we have a lot of them in one yards as well. So we have the line work lemurs, uh, Wild Beauty, and also the Moody Bloom main, main fabric in the black. So check it all out. This is all brand new in the store since, since retreat. We finally made it all live for you. There's more. So all you could, if you wanted to see everything that was connected to the Astrid's, um, all the fabrics that we used, easiest thing to do in the store is, of course, go to the search bar and type in Astrid, and it will pull all those up. We tagged them all so that you'd be easy to find. So you can do that and find all of the different Astrid's. <sighs> that was a lot. It was good. I got a little workout holding up quilts. But I have some new, uh, other new stuff in the store that I wanted to show you. We have a new deco stitch bundle. So deco stitch sold out. We always do a fat quarter bundle of our basics. So deco stitch is by, um, by Art Gallery Fabrics. And they have a, a lovely little wonderful addition to their deco stitch in, in more softer colors. So all our fat quarter bundles, we actually have all the colors listed. So it will tell you the names of each one. So it's kind of like your own color card, but of course in a fat quarter, so you can, it's, they're so usable. And then, um, so this is new and now includes 19 pieces in the fat quarter bundle for deco stitch. Um, and then we have another brand new one. This one is very cute. This is um, called Lilliput. This is also by Art Gallery and very similar feel as, you know, our, one of our favorite fabrics for, for um, the Pitter Patter quilt was made, was, has a similar feel, of course, different colors. So it kind of all starts with this floral with all these beautiful colors of this, um, peach and, and these greens, this really nice kind of a caramely color and navy. Um, and then here you go with a little whimsical part. So we have foxes and squirrels and, and turtles and ducks and bunnies. And then we have this print, which is kind of like a little clubhouse, a little tree house. A TP, so all really fun thing. So I love that they kind of have a connection to kids, but not too juvenile. You could totally use this for whatever, but I just love it. Little kind of whimsical. So then we have the frogs jumping on the lily pads, and one of them has a crown. Gotta love that. <laughs> I just love that. So then here is one of my favorite colors this year. Uh, love this print and it's kind of connected throughout the whole line and we have a second color or second fabric in that color a little bit darker and then we have the greens and, we, and they're frogs uh, peeking out of the, the water there peeking their heads out and then uh, that darker darker green um, and then we have two navy so we have the one with the fireflies on, in the green color and then we have this last one also with a little touch of green this dark blue navy color so really pretty beautiful line this would make gorgeous pitter patter quilts of course really pretty uh, and would work well because these are 10 pieces and with that one using fat quarters or half yards you could use this for a background you could use all the different colors for the um, for the uh, uh, fat quarters, and then you could do one of the darker ones for the binding. Uh, and probably make a couple quilts. But I, of course, started pulling some more colors. So to do my color matching, uh, I love how Art Gallery's fabrics and their colors sometimes work really well with the Dear Stella basic. So we have a dash flow in the blueprint. 
and a scal scallop dot in the navy. So both of these are Dear Stella, but they mix perfectly well with these fabrics. Again, carrying on into the greens, we have the dash flow in the bayou, a little bit bluer, but it really connects well with this blue, kind of merging into these greens, and then the lighter color with the dash flow meadow. And then we go into the, the kind of praline color, and we have, of course, the deco stitch, pecan praline, great match there, but another dash flow with a brand being a little bit lighter and darker, um, having that little bit of layers. Now, if you wanted to add something to it or, or wanted to have it, like an accent, uh, this deco stitch peach whisper is a perfect to go with the peach and the floral. So that one works really well, and I actually left one at home at the warehouse, and that's, that's the um, violet one or the um, lilac one. That, that is in the bundle. No, I don't have it. I put it away. But those would work really well. If you wanted to add some more lights, the Dashflow Marzipan has that little bit of, of more creamier tone that some of the, this background fab or this main fabric has, and then this one. So this would be a great addition if you wanted to add more lights, if you wanted to do something that has lights and darks. So that is my fabric pull for Lily Put. Really, really cute and just darling for um, for some, for either baby or kids or just for anybody, really. We have another bundle that I literally pulled out from the cutting today. So I didn't pull one yards with it <laughs> because I was just, I wanted to show you guys. But we've had this on pre-order. It's called Pamper. It's by Macauer UK, and it is amazing. I love it. So it's very girly. Girls shopping. It's girls' night out, girls' day out, um, girl everything. So they are all in front of the stores on their bikes and having, you know, Prosecco and cupcakes. Love um, the, the poodle. They're just, it's just adorable. So this is one of the prints, and they're all kind of that, that fun play. So we have handbags and shoes in this print. Just love it. So this, would, this line would just be really pretty for um, if you make, you know, any kind of bags for, or um, cosmetic bags or a quilt. I would make a quilt out of it. I love these hearts. There's just a little touch of metallic in here. And then we have the lipstick kisses. I uh, love the little gold lipstick kisses. We have a little small floral, which is just, I love this because it's so dainty, and I love the different small colors and textures in here. So really kind of a modern take on a small floral. And then we have the shoes. We have the shoe print on a, an awesome pin dot, polka dot. Um, going into a little bit darker colors, look at this one. So this is all of the little stores, the cafe, bar, the patisserie, perfumery. This, of course, could take place in Paris uh, or anywhere, but, of course, um, I'm a little objective, I guess. <laughs> Love. Uh, look at the florist. So just so cute. And then we have... The cosmetics, we have the lipstick and all the little makeup stuff. And I actually thought of using this for um, some of my little nieces. They love dress up, and they, this will just make really cute things for them. We have hearts in the red, and then we have the lipstick in the red. I'm out of room. So this is a 12-piece bundle. Um, we have the small floral in the dark. So a little bit of black in there, which is great because it has a lot of the black, um, more so of the charcoal. So the last piece is the bags and the shoes in the dark, dark charcoal background. So this is Pamper, but um, so this is what the bundle looks like. Very distinctive lights and darks, but just such playful, fun fabrics. But that's not all. We have a panel that is not in the bundle, it's sold separately, but the pamper panel is so cute. So look at these. So these are about, let me measure, 
I think I have to measure this because I was wondering myself. Um, so they they are about five, well, just just under six inches, um, edge to edge. So you could you could probably just cut them out and fudge them into a six inch anything, or maybe more like a five and a half. Sorry, it's a five and a half. Five and a half is what would work. And so I love the one reading with her house plants. <laughs> of course, I love the one shopping. <laughs> I love the mask and the bathtub. Um, we got a yoga girl, dog walking, and uh, that's not it. So these are, what, four by four. So these 16 over here, it's got a little birthday spread, but then there's other 16 here. So got chick on her scooter with a dog in a bag, girls, um, happy hour, cocktails, and of course I love this one. Bottle says Prosecco time, happy hour. Shoe shopping is just adorable. A pedicure? I don't look like that when I get a pedicure. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but it's so cute, isn't it? So this is Pamper. Um, like I said, panel is separate, but wouldn't this be really cute for, um, for like little cosmetic bags, little zip, zipper bags, or even a bigger bag? This would be adorable. Or I thought even like these could be coasters for your friends for girls' night. They're kind of big, but... You know, sometimes you get, you get big cocktails. So you need what big coasters, huh? A big pack. I'm saying, like, all I would make all kinds of bags. I think I will probably make a little quilt for my little nieces, and so anything would be good. I would probably do something like little JoJo or um, or JoJo the original. Be a cool table runner too. Actually, some of these I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't cut these up too 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 much. But Algorithm, Sammy, any of those would work really well to show off the prints. Yes, love these. You don't want a quilt made out of this? We'll pass on that I'll one? I'll pass on that Pass one. on that one? Okay. All right. <laughs> shoes are too high. It's not my style. They're, yeah, they're not quite your style. But um, do we have a winner? Do we have a winner? Live winner ready? Yes. Cheryl Lynch is our winner. Congratulations. You are a live winner. So make sure you contact us either via email, send us a message on Facebook. Um, $25 gift card is yours. So we'd love to get it to you as soon as possible. Congrats. Congrats. So I, uh, of course, want to finish it up with a giveaway question. So the giveaway question of course, we had to talk about the new patterns. So which of the new patterns is your favorite? Is there anyone that you would make first? Don't ask me who is my favorite. They are all so different, as you can see. We got Astrid, and then we got Steamy Window Super Size. Super easy, quick. Astrid, not so much, but still not hard. Um, and we got a bag, and then we got three table runners. I can't choose. I can't choose, but... I'll probably make most of them again, tell you that. Um, so all you have to do is answer the question in the, in the comments. Oh, Mr. HP is putting them all up again for you. That's great. Um, and then we will randomly pick a, pick a winner and announce it next week on the show. Our show next week will be a big one. You want to not miss that one. That's going to be our 100th Tipsy Tuesday episode, 100 shows. It's April 27th at 7 p.m. Central. You got to come celebrate. We, we kind of have to have cocktails. Do we? Yeah, on a Tuesday. Okay. We kind of do. There has to be a tipsy, a, a real tipsy Tuesday, the 100th episode. Um, so make sure you catch us next week. And we're going to do a slideshow of the, of the um, strip joints, quilts that we'll have, and a little special. We got some something special always, especially for a hundredth show. Now I will be live this coming Friday as well for our Happy Friday show with the fresh cocktail, uh, April twenty third at three p.m. Central. But that is it for us tonight. I hope uh, you enjoyed our new offerings, and we'll catch us later this week. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.